Welcome back everybody and today we will be playing Let's Make Some Brown Space Marines because they seem to be rather underrepresented uh, and uh, I'm starting off with a black base coat and I've used Downer Rally inks before and unfortunately sometimes you get a glossy finish and so I'm mixing red earth with a matte medium and spraying that on uh, to get a base coat and I've taken some stills just to get an idea of where the highlight should be because I'm trying to get creative and what I'll be looking at primarily is using dry brushing methods to try and build up the contrasts, the dark and the light and uh, starting off with our first uh, representative and we're going to be using metallics so dry brushing a rough iron onto the base brown gives a somewhat silver sheen and there's four colors that you get in the army painter war paint set you get the rough iron there's a true copper uh, and there is a greedy gold and a plate metal so you go from brown through to a sort of an orange to gold to white and I thought maybe I can go through the whole progression of those colors progressively building up the coloration and reducing the area of coverage to see if I can create uh, some form of highlight system using the highlight map uh, that uh, I took using the photos to get an idea of where those spot highlights should be and so progressively building up using the dry brush method making sure the brush is considerably dry uh, my mistake tainted gold not greedy gold there is a fifth one uh, tainted gold is more of a yellow gold rather than a gold gold it's a sort of a greeny color and uh, using that over the top again just trying to progressively build up that sheen uh, and keeping trying to maintain the brown in the sort of the recesses and for the bulk coloration of the model to give it that sort of dark tone and just being careful to sort of apply it in those areas where I want and also as we go lighter and lighter and finally get to our plate mail metal start to use it a bit as a highlight as well on the edges uh, so just brushing over those to try and increase the brightness and uh, try and get that uh, sort of light intensity map happening uh, almost in a black and white sort of scale uh, but just with that sort of brownish hue so we're going for that sepia tone look and uh, the end result after a, a few applications uh, gives you a sort of a shiny looking model and uh, obviously it's a bit bland and I think we need to embellish it a little bit so I've gone in with some speed paint and just uh, highlighted some of the features like the shoulder pads uh, just to give it a little bit of pop and visual interest and uh, my keeping within the lines was a bit ordinary I ended up painting the whole side uh, and then went back and courtesy of it being speed paint 1.0 I was able to actually take it off uh, because I was a bit neater with the second shoulder pad and I preferred that look uh, now you can also see that I've done the loincloth uh, and I started off with a white speed paint uh, which is more gray than white and then I've gone in with some white highlights and uh, once I've got the white highlights I've gone back in again with the white speed paint over the top because it's slightly transparent uh, to give a sort of a uniform appearance to the loincloth and then played around with the weapon uh, just using a dark gray a light gray and a white to sort of embellish uh, the parts of the gun to give it a bit of visual interest as well now I thought that the loincloth needed a little bit of a boost and I've come in with the grey speed paint here to generate a bit of shadow contrast because it was looking a little bit too uniform and uh, generally just slap the speed paint on obviously not too crazy but let it pull in those recesses because we want the shadows to appear in the darkened areas and also across the bottom uh, just to make it look like it's been dragged in the dirt sort of thing and uh, that was the approach that we took with this particular uh, option now we also did all of the uh, bags across uh, all the little pouches and everything uh, at the same time just to provide continuity 
between the loincloth and uh, what else he was wearing and then we went in with a black speed paint and just covered up the mechanisms on the gun to create that nice black sort of finish over that sort of brown metallic that uh, just naturally developed through the uh, dry brushing what i've noticed is that progressively i have been diversifying how i've been using the paints and the speed paint in particular instead of just using it as a base coat over your typical slap chop uh, white zenithal highlighted sort of starting point I have tended to been using it more like a shade and uh, using it to sort of blend uh, uh, rather than having to do multiple layers of acrylic paint uh, you're able to go in there and uh, use it to sort of smooth over transitions and also provide colorations and the beauty of most of the uh, speed paints is that they have that translucency and so you can go in there and utilize them and still see the base color coming through to some extent and that's why the black is actually quite good uh, at doing that uh, so quite happy with uh, sort of how you can use paints for so many different sort of uh, approaches and techniques and uh, so we just finished off the model just using some of the detailing to highlight some of the other little bits and pieces like the specific uh, emblems on the legs and uh, chains dangling that sort of thing to end up with a final product and uh, number two we went back to the red earth which was our base coat but then we used uh, burned flesh from Vallejo together with skin, elf skin tone to try and create some form of triad and uh, although we already had the base coat there sprayed over black it was somewhat thin and uh, going in again to do a dry brush with a more diluted version of that red earth just to build up as a sort of a highlight again so it's sort of a, a bit of a go-to that I've been using where I have the base mid-tone sort of thing and then you just progressively keep building up the mid-tones into highlights and uh, you can see it concentrates and you've just got a bit of a stronger red coloration that develops uh, and you've still got that dull gray background uh, so rather than using a sponge technique uh, I thought well let's try the dry brush approach and then started mixing the colors so we've got the gradation from one to the other in multiple sort of uh, color uh, steps and just getting lighter and lighter as we go and focusing more and more on those areas that were deemed to be where the highlights would be the cylinders on the legs the shoulder pads uh, sort of those smooth upper areas and uh, just going lighter and lighter and ultimately when we get to the end of this you can see that the uh, it, it is quite wet uh, so not so much a, a dry brush at this point but more sort of a stippling effect uh, more like the sponge uh, because I'm, we're just trying to get the color on at this point and ultimately because we're going to go over uh, once we've done this with the speed paint which sort of uh, brings it all back together so even though it really looks exceptionally messy uh, and very stripy and irregular uh, ultimately I guess that's the way light sort of does work we're getting the the base uh, tone and brightness down and we've got the base coloration and you can see that it really looks quite uh, poor <laughs> at this point uh, looks like Blind Freddy did the job but the beauty is that uh, this is where we now come in with the speed paints now uh, there's two brown speed paints in the range dark wood and hardened leather uh, and I found one was too dark and one was too sort of tan colored and combining the two uh, gave me a color that was more on the sort of the red tone uh, but was dark enough and uh, then just applied that over the model and again because it's translucent you can see through it so you get to see the light and the dark transitions uh, but it sort of disguises some of the obvious uh, sort of contrast that you don't want because of the application and you get that uniform coloration uh, but you get the dark and the light showing through and uh, just as usual applying it in such a way that uh, you're putting it on thickly to give it a chance to pull and then the loincloth using the triad system here in acrylics because we're going over a dark color and haven't really done too many of these cloth type operations 
and so I thought okay we'll just go in and create our own sort of irregular and very poorly applied as you can see uh, sort of stripes to go dark to light and I wasn't too sure if it was a good way to do it or not uh, but just using the three colors uh, to provide that transition and again you can see there's no real progression from one to the other I haven't mixed the paint it's just a matter of going one two and three and close up it does look pretty awful but uh, just as we've done before I'm going to go in with a speed paint and try and tile that together so that you've got some uniformity only I'm going to get a little bit more creative with this one and try some wet blending now I did do a bit of a, a bright highlight on just some of the edges uh, so we detailed the uh, highest points with a bit of a lighter color so I mix a bit of white in with the last color just to brighten it up a little uh, and then I grabbed not some speed paint for a change uh, but actually I used two Citadel contrast paints Athematic Blue and Pterodon Turquoise and uh, ultimately I just applied the dark color where the dark uh, sort of shadows would be and immediately just went straight to another brush and applied the light color to that and uh, just let them sort of mix together to try and create a transition with the contrast paints and use the contrast paint to blend out the pretty ordinary looking sort of application underneath it to see if we can get something that looks a little bit more natural and progressive and uh, front and back that was done and it tends to definitely blend everything together and hides a lot of sins so if you're pretty ordinary with your brush control uh, it seems to work relatively well uh, and you'll get to see that soon and then it was just a matter of playing detailing some of the bits and pieces so I thought I'd get creative and add a little bit of white onto the part of the shoulder pad and the helmet just to add some uh, detail uh, to break it all up uh, getting more creative with the gun barrel I used greedy gold and uh, orange tried to mix the two together to see if I could get more of a sort of an orange tone uh, sort of worked uh, not particularly orange more yellowy but uh, ultimately it gave a bit of contrast to the gun using the same black approach then on the rest of it uh, with the black speed paint uh, but for change here on the exhaust jets and uh, intakes or whatever they happen to be on the backpack I used canoptic alloy uh, just to provide a little bit of similarity to the look keeping that sort of the brown tone so trying to go with the it's all brown brown on this particular one uh, with the exception of the loincloth and uh, then uh, again using black speed paint and this time over the uh, I don't have to do any work because it kind of got dry brushed on detail of the pouches around the belt uh, just put a little bit of that there just to darken everything down and the highlights were already naturally there and uh, here we have the final result on some sort of uh, light gray bases and just to sort of dry brushed a little bit of that light coloration onto those loincloths and the base of the, the legs the feet that sort of thing to make it look like they're standing in their environment and uh, we have a couple of uh, brownish looking space marines which uh, I don't think look all that disgusting sure they're not bright uh, they kind of blend in a little bit uh, but uh, I don't know why they haven't seen uh, uh, as much use uh, they don't get as much love uh, for whatever reason but uh, yes one is a little bit more metallic one is definitely a sort of brown coloration and uh, we applied a different process here I've been sponging to death in the past and I thought uh, might be a nice opportunity to try something a little bit different and certainly liked doing uh, the dry brushing of the metallics uh, so hopefully you've enjoyed all this it's certainly been uh, a nice little exercise and uh, we'll hopefully see you in the next one